The subcompact hatchback scene in the US is frankly pretty lackadaisical. There are a few funsters out there like the Ford Fiesta ST and the Honda Fit that keep enthusiasts excited, but for most people, cars in this segment are competing with used vehicles as much as they are with one another. Kia would love to expand its footprint in this small part of the market with the all new 2018 Rio 5 door. But does this fresh look at basic transportation have what it takes to earn new buyers? How does it look? The Rio's design is pretty tidy, though it's quite conservative compared with the angular designs of the Fit and the Nissan Versa Note. I don't feel strongly enough about it to call it good or bad looking, so I'll just call it forgettable. How's the storage? Now, since the Rio has a smaller overall interior volume than most of its competitors, it's no surprise that there's less space behind the rear seats as well. Still, they fold 60-40 and they should offer pretty reasonable versatility for hauling stuff around. Kia has done a decent job with limited interior space here. There's a good sized tray for your phone or keys in front of the shifter, a couple of cup holders, and a deep bin under the armrest. Don't look for clever packaging, but there should be enough space to accommodate an average commuter. Is it roomy? Unfortunately, no car in this class has an overabundance of space for someone my size, but the Rio does measure out well in terms of head, leg, and shoulder room in the front seat when you look at the competitive set. Leg room is a real issue in the back seats, however, as the Kia is down at least a couple of inches to most everything. How does the interior feel? So this contrasting red and black interior is part of the EX launch edition for the Kia Rio, and it's a little bit too interview with a vampire for my taste, but I will say that it's more interesting than your average black or gray plastic interior in a subcompact. Is it well equipped? My Rio 5 door is the top trim EX version, and it offers a useful, if not extravagant, complement of standard features. Wheels are 15-inch alloys in place of the 15-inch steelies with wheel covers that come on lower trim levels. EX also gets you the 6-speed automatic transmission, a 7-inch touchscreen instead of the base 5-incher, and a leather-wrapped steering wheel. The only optional equipment on the car are carpeted floor mats for $150, and the aforementioned Launch Edition red interior trim that runs $500. How's the infotainment system? This 7-inch touchscreen with Kyo's Uvo system only comes in the top-level Rio EX, and I think it's suitable, if not mind-blowing, for an $18,000 car. The screen is responsive and configurable, and there are lots of redundant hard buttons if touchscreens aren't your thing, but the best feature is its ability to run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Is it a good daily driver? Now, there are definitely pluses and minuses to the Rio as a daily driver. On the plus side, I've got great forward visibility and actually pretty great visibility all the way around. It's also really, really quiet. We're going a relatively slow speed right now, but I commuted a lot in this car and even on the highway, it's a lot quieter than most of the things in the class. On the downside, in that same commuting experience, I found out that the brake pedal is actually really grabby, so much so that it was kind of hard to get used to in stop and go traffic. Is it fun to drive? So actually, the 1.6 liter four cylinder that's under the hood here is making 130 horsepower and 119 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty good for the class, but it's certainly not enough to make the car feel quick. And honestly, it's more let down by the six-speed automatic transmission than it is by the output. Even when you put this thing in sport mode, it's not great, but when you have it in regular mode, it just feels really, really reluctant to move quickly. And if you're hoping that this small, lightweight car can be saved from a lack of power by its handling, well, it's not. Uh, the handling isn't exactly sloppy, but it does understeer if you push it at all. I think the problem could probably be solved with better tires if you wanna go that route, but at that point, why are you buying a Rio? How's the fuel economy? 
With 27 miles per gallon in the city and 35 on the highway, the Rio is pretty far behind the big sellers Versa and Fit. Though on two 40 mile highway commutes from home, I did come close to the EPA numbers, so the figures do seem achievable. How much is it? Pricing for the 2018 Rio 5 door runs from $14,200 at the base, up to $18,700 for the top level EX. Our test car doesn't have an official sticker since it's a pre-production unit, but with the $500 premium for the launch edition, we estimate it's a little over 20 grand. So slightly cheaper than a Honda Fit and slightly more expensive than a Versa Note. What are the negatives? Listen, buying a brand new car, especially your first brand new car, should be something that's really exciting. And while the Rio does check all of the boxes for safe, basic transportation, it doesn't do anything to get me stoked to put it in my driveway. Who should buy it? If you're looking for something that's really affordable with a great warranty and painless operation, you should definitely check out this 2018 Rio. Just make sure that you at least dip into the Honda and Nissan dealers before you sign the paperwork.